Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, today we're going to be talking about more conspiracy theories. Now the first conspiracy theory we're going to talk about involves Selena Gomez, which is kind of a surprise because I haven't really heard any conspiracies about her before, but recently I heard this one and it's pretty believable. So the theory is that Selena Gomez is actually a lesbian. Also, before I get into this theory, I just want to say this is not me outing Selena Gomez. I don't know if she's a lesbian or not. It's just a conspiracy theory and we're having fun. Okay, here's how it goes. Basically, conspiracy theorists think that Selena Gomez's relationship with Justin Bieber was fake and it was created, you know, to get publicity for both of their projects and that before that relationship happened, Selena Gomez was actually romantically involved with Demi Lovato. Now, as you guys know, Demi Lovato has been pretty open about the fact that she's bisexual and she's experimented with girls and stuff. And if you look back, they were really, really close. I mean, I remember when they were making videos together and posting pictures all the time together and now they don't talk at all. And there seems to be like a lot of anger between them, but they've never really explained it. Anytime they get asked about it on like a red carpet, they kind of say like, I don't want to talk about it. Well, maybe they're so angry because they're fucking bitter exes. And maybe Demi Lovato fucking hates Selena Gomez so much because she's like, bitch, you pretended like I didn't exist. And Demi Lovato has been the one that's been very open about like how much she doesn't like Selena Gomez anymore, which kind of to me sounds like a bitter ex. Now I know a lot of people probably think this sounds crazy, but honestly, fake relationships in Hollywood have been around forever. Just a personal story. I remember when I signed to my first agent back in like 2009 and I was having a meeting with them and I was just like talking about what I wanted to do with my career and you know talking about how I wanted to direct movies and one of the agents literally said to me and I'm not kidding great so first let's put you in a relationship with somebody on TV um we have a list here of available girls that are willing to do this for publicity and I was like wait what like you want me to date them and they're like no you know like date them basically go to red carpets with them be seen at coffee shops get your picture taken and then hopefully you'll be in a magazine or something and it'll get you guys a little more publicity I was so confused I was like wait people do that and they were like Shane every relationship in Hollywood for the most part is fucking bullshit. I mean, Zac Efron and Vanessa Hudgens, hello. They were both together while High School Musical happened and then they both broke up literally the day after High School Musical 3 came out. So it kind of would make sense that Selena and Justin were never really together. I mean, all his music is about her, which gets it more publicity. All her music is about him, which gets her more publicity. And then you got Demi Lovato over there in the corner going, fuck you both. So I don't know, sounds kind of believable to me, but who knows. Speaking of fake relationships, this next conspiracy has been around forever and um, I have been fascinated by this since I was like 12. So the theory is that all of Tom Cruise's relationships are fake and all the girls are in a contract. So here's how the theory started. First of all, I'm gonna say this is just a theory. I do not wanna get murdered by the Church of Scientology. I don't know what's actually going on in there. This is just a theory. Hmm. So what a lot of people think is that Tom Cruise is gay and he does not wanna come out and the church does not want that to come out. So they're trying to help him get rid of it while also helping him find wives. It's really fucked up. Let me continue. So the way it works, supposedly, is that they will bring him different actresses to interview and he will pick one and then the contract lasts five years and the actress will get press, she'll get money, she'll get cast in movies, she'll get fame and then after the five years is over she's free to leave and a bonus check will be given to her if she has a child with him. Now that rumor came out years ago, right after he divorced Nicole Kidman. Well, guess what happened? Tom Cruise ended up marrying Katie Holmes, who had a kid and who got divorced from him five years literally five years to the day. Like she was waiting on that fucking clock. Like she had the contract in her hand and she's like, bitch, I'm out. Now a list of other actresses got leaked that were supposedly auditioning for the part of Tom Cruise's wife. On the list were Scarlett Johansson, Jessica Alba, Lindsay Lohan, and Kate Bosworth. But ultimately Katie Holmes won the part. Now what's also scary is the way that it changed Katie Holmes as a person. Just before Tom Cruise, she was cool, she was down to earth, she was fun. After she met him, she became a fun a Scientology robot. And then after she left him, she was back to her fun self again. It's almost like he had her in some type of trance. Just check out this clip of Katie Holmes on the Conan O'Brien show in 2000. This is before she knew Tom Cruise. I sound shallow, but I like to be with somebody who's taller than me. Really? I like to be. <laughs> interesting, no, okay, yeah. And I'm, gonna I'm 55 years old. I'm like, interesting. Uh, no, no, but do you like? <laughs> See, she was just a cool girl, down to earth, fun. Well, check out this clip from 2008 after she met Tom Cruise. She's yeah. amazing. I mean, she's a great artist. She just came out with her book and she's doing all this designing. 
And Queen Latifah won a Golden Globe last mm -hmm. night. They're good for everybody. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. That's a fucking different person. That's somebody who literally has been brainwashed. She was like lifeless and creepy and wasn't really talking. Well now, look what happened after she left Tom Cruise. This is a clip from her on The Tonight Show in 2016. What were you trying, that, I, mean, I like that. I was that. trying, I, we, we were just excited and then we joined in as though we were a part of it. Oh really? I and then he cheered. <laughs> I'm not, I can't what, do the, like I that. can't do the, oh yeah. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> right? That's great! See, she's back to being the normal Katie Holmes again. She's not in a fucking weird contract with Tom Cruise. She's not brainwashed. Thank God. Now, I've talked to a lot of people in Hollywood, like agents and managers and actors, and I love to bring up this Tom Cruise thing. And all of them have stories, and all of them believe it. So, I don't know, I fucking believe it too. Here's another piece of evidence. A woman named Annette Johansson came out recently saying that she interviewed to be the part of Tom Cruise's wife. She said a film crew came to her house, interviewed her, asked her questions about what she would be like as a wife, and what she would be like as a mother. They asked her if she was into any weird sexual things. They asked her a lot of personal questions, and she was really confused by it because she thought she was just auditioning for a movie role. Well, it turns out later she heard from other actresses that they all had the same interview and supposedly Katie Holmes had the exact same interview as well. She got it. I don't know. It's so creepy to me. That whole Tom Cruise thing is creepy and I fucking love Tom Cruise. I love his movies, but whew. All right, speaking of creepy celebrity conspiracies, this next one is kind of dumb, but it honestly scares me a little bit because it involves Beyonce and she in general scares me a little bit. And that is the theory that Beyonce is actually dead. Now, a lot of people think Beyonce actually died in the year 2000. And they think that she's been replaced by somebody who looks like Beyonce and acts like Beyonce, but isn't Beyonce. That's one theory. This other theory is a little scarier, but honestly, I kind of believe it. But just a little bit. That is the theory that the current Beyonce that we know now is really just a clone. Now the theory goes that back in 2000, Beyonce had some of her DNA put away because, you know, she knew something bad could happen, the record label knew something bad could happen, and they did not want to lose Beyonce. And she didn't want to die. She wanted to live on forever. So she put her DNA away. Well, when she did die in a car crash in 2000, the record label said, well, let's take that DNA, let's put a bunch of money into it, let's recreate her. And that's when the clone of Beyonce came to be. So a lot of theorists have been putting pictures side by side of what Beyonce used to look like versus what she looks like now. They're saying, you know, her hair has changed, her nose has changed, her eyes have changed, her mouth has changed. And then this clip came out that people were really creeped out by. Now this is a clip of her at a basketball game and people think she looks like a, <laughs> like a clone robot that's kind of like on autopilot. And I'm gonna be honest, this clip is literally like five minutes long. I'm only gonna show you like 15 seconds of it, but it goes on for five minutes and she's just doing this the whole time. Check it out. Right, like that literally like, unless she was fucking drunk out of her mind. I, I don't know, I can't explain it. Another thing that people have noticed is that Beyonce never smiles anymore. She used to smile all the time before she died. And now she's just always like, hmm, hmm. I mean, look at all these pictures. No smile, no smile, no smile, no smile. But look at pictures of her before 2000. Smiling, smiling, smiling. I don't know. Seems like there's some kind of life missing. Either way, Beyonce, if you're watching this, I love you, please don't kill me. I know you're probably in the Illuminati. I won't tell anybody, oh my God. Okay, so this last conspiracy theory is not about celebrities and it's not like fun or funny. It's actually pretty serious. Now, I wasn't really gonna bring this up, but I kind of had to because you guys like when I talk about the darker ones and um, this one's dark. So this is the theory that the newscaster who got shot in Virginia a couple years ago didn't happen. Now, as most of you guys know, a newscaster got shot live on the air by one of her coworkers who was mad at her for some reason. Nobody really figured it out. And they were rolling while it happened. So a little while after that entire situation happened, um, a lot of conspiracy theorists came out and said that it was fake. Now, I'm not saying it's fake. This is just a theory. Total respect to all the families involved. It's fucking awful. But here is what people think is evidence that it didn't really happen. So there's two angles of the shooting. First angle is from the shooter's perspective when he was filming it on a camera. The second angle is from the news camera's perspective. Now, a user by the name of Lita Ohio put these two clips together and showed that there are some differences. In one clip, you can see the newscaster shaking her head right before she gets shot. And then the other perspective, 
she's not shaking your hand. But basically what they think that means is that this shooting was filmed two different times in two takes. One from this camera, one from this camera, which means that there would be a few differences because no actor can do the same thing twice perfectly. So here's the two angles side by side. Check it out. I want to focus on Alison Parker's reaction and it should be exactly the same. So let's have a look at it in normal speed. So if you didn't catch the head nod, here it is again in slow motion. The nodding is there. Look at that. Down, up, and down again, and the shot will be fired as the head goes down. There. But here, there is no nodding whatsoever. Especially, you're going to take note, the last second before he shoots his blanks. Her head is as still as it can possibly be. I mean, I don't know. It looks different, right? Like, she's clearly not moving her head in that other perspective. I don't know. I'm just saying it, it definitely is creepy. <laughs> now, there's another thing that people noticed, and that was that when the gun went off, there was a big flare. Now, even when I first saw this video, I was like, wait a minute. Like, I've seen videos of people shooting guns before, and I've never seen, like, that kind of a flare. I've only seen that in, like, video games or movies, but I've never seen that in real life. Well, a lot of people agreed with me. A user by the name of Pete Rake actually took the same gun that the shooter used, took it out on a field, and shot it on camera just to see what it would look like. Well, when he did that, there's no flare. Check it out. So now check out the shooter's video with the flare. Now check them out side by side. Another thing I noticed that a lot of other people noticed was there was no blood. Like when she got shot, there was no blood and I don't know. I, once again, all respect to the families and it's an awful thing that happened, but all I'm saying is it is really hard for me to believe anything I see on the news. I don't believe half of it, but I feel like it's only gonna get crazier. I feel like more and more shit's gonna happen that we're not gonna know if it's real or not, and we have to be on the lookout. Well, there you guys go. Hopefully you enjoyed this conspiracy theory video. I know there were some fun ones and some not so fun ones, but if you enjoyed it and you want me to make more of these videos, please give me a thumbs up so I know. Also subscribe right down there. I make new videos every single day. And if you wanna see all my other conspiracy theory videos, I will put a link to a playlist in the description below. All right, you little conspiracy theorists, I will see you tomorrow. <coughs> Don't believe everything you see. No offense to Arby's. Actually, no offense to Arby's. Your logo looks like a dick. And your sandwiches look like an old pussy. Which is why I blame you for all my childhood sexual issues, Arby. Maybe that's why I stayed away from penis and vagina for so long, because I was so scared of it. Which is why I drank Taco Bell for love, which is why I fell in love with the Taco Bell dog, which is why I probably love dogs more than people.